So we've made our wind turbine, now how do we accurately measure the performance of it? We want to know RPM, volts, amps, power, wind speed. We want to see all of this data together instantaneously every second in real time. We want to see the power curve for our turbine. We want to see the history for the last minute, the last hour, the last day, week, whatever. Perhaps we want to see data from multiple turbines and anemometers and maybe even calibrate anemometers. We want to present all of this performance data in a way that anyone can understand. All of the performance data that you see in this video is directly taken from the turbines and anemometers in the system. What we see is the real performance of our turbines. The system is simple and can be made at low cost by anyone. The system consists of a wind turbine and an anemometer connected to a microcontroller which itself is connected to a PC or a laptop, which is the display interface. There's also a micro SD card on the microcontroller to log data. The RPM volts and amps are transferred from the turbines to the microcontroller, and you can connect multiple anemometers or wind turbines to the microcontroller. The microcontroller collects all of the data from the turbines and passes it on to the laptop for display. The microcontroller board is powered by USB, that's the cable at the bottom right. The micro SD card is the bottom left. The performance data collected in this video is via a small fan for the anemometer, as you can see, and by turning the power turbine by hand. After starting the program on the laptop, this is what you'll see. And there are principally three assets for the turbine, that's the real-time, the history and the files. So I'll look at the real-time first. So here you see the data that you can get with the speed, volts, amps and power and if I turn the main turbine now you can see some data in there. The turbine drop down allows you to select one of up to five predefined turbines. Turbine 1 is my main turbine and turbine 2 is the anemometer. The anemometer will have uh, continuous data available because it's been driven by the fan and we can also pull up a chart to see the same data. I can speed it up by hand as well just to show you the change and it will return back to its fairly constant operating speed. We'll take a look later at how to configure the turbines. I'll now change uh, back to the main turbine Turbine 1. You can pull up as many windows as you want. Since I'm on the laptop, they're quite small, so we'll stick to two. Have a look at the volts and the speed. So if I turn the main turbine by hand now, you'll see some data in there. Each data point on the chart is a fresh set of data for that particular second and there is a min, max and average value for each second. You can change what type of data you're looking at by the drop down. So we can change that to the power and if I turn the turbine again you'll see a power reading with the speed. We're not generating any meaningful power because we haven't got a battery attached to the system. There's just a resistive load. 
Well, that's all good stuff, but we're only looking at 60 seconds worth of data at a time. Sometimes we want to look at an extended period of time. So that's what the turbine history assets for. And there are three different views on this. The drop downs allow you to select whatever plot you want to look at for whatever turbine for whatever period of time. So let's take a look at the RPM for the last 20 minutes or so. And of course, you can select multiple charts. So we'll look at the volts as well. It would be nice to actually see some data on the same plot instead of having to pull up multiple plots. And that's what the combined view will do for us. So let's have a look at that. So here we see multiple sets of data on the same time x-axis. We can see two speed outputs on this plot, so we could use this to calibrate one anemometer against another. And let's have a look at the final view in the history. Uh, this is the power curve. This isn't a sunny day representation of the performance of your turbine. This is the raw data displayed graphically. We can also get a view on accumulated outputs. So accumulated power would be of interest to us. So let's have a look at the power output for the last 20 minutes. And if we change the plot type to a bar chart, we can see what the accumulated power has been. It's also useful to be able to back up your files onto the PC. So if we look at the third asset we've got, and it's turbine files, we can transfer a file on the SD card to the hard disk on the PC. Once the file is on the PC, we can use the file reader to look at our plots again. There can be up to five turbines defined in the system, consisting of three speed ports and two power ports. Each power port consists of a voltage and a current reading. The turbine's configuration is controlled by updating the preferences. And here we can see the user configurations that are already defined for the power turbine and the anemometer. Each turbine has a flag for speed in use and power in use. The anemometer will only use a speed port and the power turbine will use a power port and possibly also a speed port. In this default configuration there are two turbines defined using three ports, two speed ports and a power port. The rotor diameter can also be defined here, which is used for the speed calculations in meters per second. The number of magnets on the rotating shaft are used to calculate the RPM, and the calibration factor to fine tune the wind speed. In the next video, we'll see how the system works and how to build it.